Welcome to another episode of Operation 3731, the weekly video series from First Baptist Nixa dedicated to helping you memorize and meditate upon the Word of God. We are continuing to work our way through Romans 8, and today we come to verse 20, which says, For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Now, this verse is the continuation of the thought begun in verse 18. So, before we get started, let's look back uh, at where we have been. Paul says in verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. So this paragraph is all about, this paragraph running from verse, uh, verse 18 to verse 25, it's all about our present sufferings and our future glory. Every verse in this paragraph deals with one or other of those themes. Verse 20, of course, is focused upon the theme of our present sufferings, and it extends our present sufferings to all of creation. So let's meditate upon this text today by noting three points. First... Let's focus upon the first phrase where Paul says, For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly. Note the first word, for. This word clues us into the fact that this verse is providing a grounds or a reason for a statement previously made. So this is looking back to verse 19 which said that the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. And that, that raises a question in the reader's mind. Why? Why is creation craning its neck? That's what uh, it would be a great translation of um, eager longing. To stretch the neck is literally what that means. Uh, why is creation craning its neck to see the sons of God revealed in glory on the last day? The answer is for or because of the present condition of creation. Creation is presently subjected to futility, and that not willingly. Now, what is this futility? Um, that's a word that means vanity or emptiness or meaninglessness. And what Paul has in mind here, he's thinking back to Genesis chapter 3, specifically verses 17 to 19, and the curse of creation that resulted from Adam's sin. In Genesis 3, 17 and 19, God cursed Adam, and in the midst of that curse, God said, Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. Well, because Adam was granted dominion over creation, um, that granting of dominion occurred in Genesis 1, 28. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it or exercise dominion over it. Because Adam was granted dominion over creation, when Adam fell, all creation fell with it. And the futility of the whole creation is typified in the curse of Genesis 3 by the phrase thorns and thistles, right? Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And that's that's a picture of the futility that, that resulted in, in farming, right? Um, the idea is that when when God created the the earth and 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 gave to Adam the the responsibility of tilling the soil and keeping the garden and subduing creation, um, the, it wasn't as hard as it is today. You know, as seeds go into the ground and by God's grace, they still grow, but only with great effort by the sweat of the brow, it shall produce fruit for you. Um, sometimes you work as hard as you can and famine and drought um, come and thorns and thistles are all that you get. So the point is that because of Adam's sin, and not some sin inherent in creation, remember, not willingly. Um, it, it wasn't creation's fault, it was Adam's fault. It was our fault, the fault of man. Um, creation was subjected to this futility. Uh, it doesn't work like it was designed to work. There is disease, death, and destruction in a creation that God made perfect. Second, who subjected it? 
to futility. Who subjected creation to this futility? So we come now to the second phrase, but because of him who subjected it. Who is this him? Well, that him is clearly God. God cursed creation. And just pause for a second. I want you to note a couple of things. First, look at what honor God bestowed upon mankind in granting us dominion over creation. According to Paul, creation rises and falls with and will rise again with the fate of mankind. That's, that's his point in verses uh, 19 and 20. How different this is, then, from the evolutionary worldview, which says that the only thing that separates man from the, the lower animals is blind chance and a few million years of natural selection. On the contrary, God decreed that as man goes, so goes the rest of the created order. When humanity fell, all of creation was cursed. And verse 19 and down in verses 23 to 25, we will learn that when humanity is redeemed and renewed, so will creation be. Uh, but second, I want, you to, I want you to note that this ought to sober us about the seriousness of sin. Sin is not merely a personal offense affecting only the individual sinner. Sin, according to Genesis 3, according to here in, in Romans chapter 8, sin is a grotesque cosmic abomination that affects the whole created order. All of human society, all of creation is affected by personal sin. In other words, when you see a drought in East Africa, for instance, that kills thousands, or, or when you hear of a tsunami in the Indian Ocean that kills a quarter of a million people like it did in 2004, theologically speaking, God did that. God subjected creation to this futility, and he did it because of us, because of our sin. And I think that ought to cause us to tremble. Well, third, I want you to notice that this futility is not the final word in creation. When God subjected creation to futility, it was temporary, not permanent. God subjected to cre creation to futility in hope, right? And there's some debate over whether um, these last two words, in hope, belong more with uh, verse 21 um, or whether it belongs... Uh, better with this thought in verse 20. And and the point is, it, it really doesn't matter because as, as you will note by that little ellipsis there, this is all part of one sentence that runs um, through these verses. And so the idea is that creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that it would one day be redeemed. Um, if you ask the question, hope of what? That answer comes back uh, in the very next verse. God subjected creation to futility in hope that one day creation itself would be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. And we will get to that verse next week. So subjection to futility is not the final word of creation. It's not the final word of mankind. Both creation and men were subjected to futility in hope that one day we would walk into an experience and, and be, be brought back into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Romans 8.21 So creation is groaning in futility. And as we will see, we are groaning right along with it, for we were subjected to the same futility under the same curse. But redemption is coming, and it will come when the sons of God are revealed and are finally redeemed from the curse of sin. And it is for this that creation eagerly awaits. As we close, let's say verse 20 to, aloud together to inscribe it upon our minds. For creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it. Let's say that again. For creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it. 
And then let's put it together with verses 18 and 19, and let's keep this paragraph together and begin building it into our memories. Paul says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it.